Hello and welcome to Volusia Magazine. I'm Amber Osmond. In today's episode, we'll learn about the impact of local children's handmade art. We'll share some important holiday gift ideas for every Volusia citizen, and then we'll get to preview the plans to renovate the Smyrna Dunes Park. Later on in the show in the business beat, Joanne Magley explains how a local entrepreneur is taking on the fight against credit card theft. And Stephanie Strong gives us some encouraging updates on the numbers of HIV positive babies who are born in Florida. And finally, joining Community Information Director Dave Byron in the studio is the Ocean Center's Marketing Director, Angela Daniels. Those segments, news and more, coming right up on Volusia Magazine. I hope you stay tuned. Children's Week is coming and the annual event was heralded by hundreds of paper hands waving in the rotunda of the Thomas C. Kelly Administration Center of DeLand. The hands were created by preschool children across the county. They're on their way to Tallahassee's Capitol Rotunda, where they'll be joined by thousands of hands from across the state. For us, it's important to bring into focus children's issues. Children can't vote. So we really want to remind elected officials um, the importance of children issues. And so a best, the best way to have that happen is to visually remind them that every decision that they're making impacts a child. And so when you have hundreds and hundreds of hands up there, it starts to give people an idea that, oh, wow, what I'm doing really makes a difference. And we try to do that at the school boards, in the local counties, and at the uh, state rotunda. Children's Week will be celebrated from January 24th to the 29th to raise awareness about children's and family issues in Florida. Its goal is to strengthen Florida's families by sharing a commitment to promote the health, safety, and well-being of our children. So some of the things that we face on a regular basis is um, finding affordable, high-quality child care. Oftentimes, Paying for child care is, is hard to do, and then um, finding lots of options and finding um, what option fits me best. Another big thing that we really try to do is we really try to promote early screenings. If you have a child that at a year old uh, you feel that there might be some concerns or some developmental delays, finding that out at a year old is a, a lot better for the child and a lot more successful in their long-term um, success than if you find that out in kindergarten. So part of what we try to do too is work with community partners to encourage early screenings and then early intervention. Community organizations that are spearheading Volusia County's participation in Children's Week include the Early Learning Coalition, Healthy Start Coalition, Community Partnership for Children, United Way, Head Start, Children's Advocacy Center, Children's Medical Services, the Department of Children and Families, Easter Seals, Boys and Girls Club, and the Guardian Ad Litem Program. The hands have had a positive impact on those coming into the building and made for a festive atmosphere in which to celebrate children as we strive to meet their needs and ensure their future success. For more information about Children's Week, you can visit childrensweek.org. Hurricane season is over, just in time for the holidays. What a better way to celebrate than to give the gift of hurricane preparedness. Your gift will offer two benefits. You'll get your friends and family members thinking about hurricane safety, and you'll help them avoid the rush when hurricane watch or warning is issued. The six basics of a hurricane supply kit are water, food, first aid supplies, clothing and bedding, tools and emergency supplies, and special items. We have a weather alert radio that we recommend that the community purchase. Uh, they're wonderful radios and they will alert uh, our citizens to severe weather that may impact Volusia County. Uh, tornado warnings that may come in the middle of the night. Uh, we don't have our cell phones or our TV on, but yet the weather alert radio will give us the warning we need to be able to get into our safe room. Always important, it's a wonderful gift. No home should be without one, no business should be without one. You can also do your holiday shopping at your local Red Cross chapter or at Red RedCrossStore.org. The Red Cross has many useful preparedness items, including first aid kits. 
If you want, you can add more items including sunscreen, mosquito repellent, scissors, and waterproofication tablets. And of course another handy idea and another handy uh, gift idea is a fire extinguisher. Of course this one's fairly large, uh, will uh, put out a lot of fire, uh, but also you can get small portable fire extinguishers that go in the kitchen, under the sink. Uh, should you experience a fire, of course you want to dial 911, but a fire extinguisher is always very handy to have around the home. Something else that you can do, uh, you can include a plastic bin, flashlight, extra batteries, uh, battery operated lantern, an AM FM radio to stay informed of the local news. So you can even get a bin uh, and fill it with lots of odds and ends that again are gonna help the community stay prepared. We always think of hurricane season as the best time to get prepared, but really in Volusia County, uh, we're no stranger to tornadoes, flooding, wildfires, and many other hazards that impact the community. For more ideas about hurricane supplies, you can visit Volusia County emergency management page at volusia.org slash emergency. Perched on 73 acres of pristine land at the northern tip of the New Smyrna Beach Peninsula, Smyrna Dunes Park is surrounded by water on three sides. Waters from the Indian River flow through Ponce Inlet and into the Atlantic Ocean, providing a variety of fishing and swimming activities for park goers. The popular park, which attracts more than 150,000 visitors each year, will undergo some major renovations and upgrades in the next two years. The first component of this project is a, is a uh, fishing pier that's going to be located on the Indian River side of the park, or the inlet and river shoreline of Smyrna Dunes Park. It's going to be a big pier, about 10 feet wide and 350 feet long, running shore parallel, 80 to 90 feet from the shoreline in about 18 feet of water. So there's going to be some quality fish to be caught there, snook, redfish, flounder, trout, mangrove snapper, uh, to name a few. The pier, which will be ADA accessible and include multiple benches, will connect to the park's inland boardwalk. It will be built using concrete piling supports. The decking and handrail will be crafted from recycled plastic. The $391,000 fishing pier is funded by the Inlet and Port District and the Florida Inland Navigation District. Construction is scheduled to begin in March and with completion in September. Other parts of the park will be renovated in 2017. This project will include a widening of the current boardwalk from 5 to 8 feet, the expansion of parking lots, provisions for ADA accessibility, and a sanitary sewer connection for the park's restroom. Smyrna Dunes Park is one of Volusia County's natural gems. In addition to fishing, swimming, and boating, it provides a place for naturalists and the general public to see a variety of mammals, birds, reptiles, marine life, and vegetation in their natural habitat. Learn more about Smyrna Dunes Park by going to volusia.org slash smyrna-dunes. Credit card fraud takes place every day in a variety of ways, but as Joanne Magley explains, a local entrepreneur has created a product that can help prevent credit card theft before it ever happens. That story in this week's Business Beat. When it comes to theft prevention, Chris Gilpin of DeBerry is the person many reporters will call when they need a topic expert. He's a former consultant for the National Crime Stoppers Program and the CEO of Signal Vault in Orange City. During my time with the National Crime Stop Program, I saw at a conference the crime of crowd hacking being demonstrated. Crowd hacking is when someone walks past you and steals your credit or debit card number without ever touching you or your wallet. They use a cell phone or a scanner device they buy online. So when I saw that happen, I started looking into how can I protect myself? How can I tell the people I talk to to protect themselves? And at the time, you only had a few options. You could buy a metal wallet or you could wrap your card or you know, wallet in aluminum foil. And it just wasn't very practical. Mm -hmm. So I started looking into, well, what's gonna be a better option? How, you know, how, there has to be a better way. The Signal Vault is powered by eField technology, making credit and debit cards invisible to identity thieves. When Gilpin first had his idea for Signal Vault, which goes inside your wallet next to your credit cards, he needed about $8,000 for research and development to produce a prototype and create a website and I didn't have $8,000 at the time. 
Um, what I did have was a lottery ticket that had been sitting in my car for about a month. And when I checked it, I realized that I had hit five out of six numbers in the Florida lottery and I won $7,908. And it was right at that, it was right at the perfect time. It was perfect timing for me to launch the company because it was right before the target data breach was made public and credit card security was on everyone's mind. It was across every news outlet in the nation. And I was asked at that point to give my expert opinion for 12 different, 12 or 13 different news stations on how consumers can keep themselves safe moving forward. And I just happened to have made this product that was exactly what consumers were needing at that time. So it was like really, it was like free marketing for me. I, you know, I was being, I was being flown out across the country being able to talk about my product and it immediately, we were seeing sales that um, we weren't expecting. It, it took off very quickly. And Gilpin didn't slow down. With the encouragement of his family and friends, he auditioned for Shark Tank, a hit reality TV show where budding entrepreneurs present their ideas to five titans of industry who made their own dreams a reality and turned their ideas into lucrative empires. I had to wait 12 hours to get 60 seconds with a producer to give them my pitch and to, you know, to make an impression. And uh, a few, about five or six people before me that pitched, it was actually a company that made like wallets and sleeves for RFID protection, which is the low tech defense against this. Um, and I'd been working on my pitch, what I was gonna say for the 60 seconds for weeks now. I mean, I had, I had down, and when I heard what they said, and it was pretty similar to what I was planning to say, I said, this isn't gonna work. You know, this isn't gonna work. They're, they're not gonna see the difference, I don't think. So I scratched it. I scratched my whole speech right then. And uh, what I said to them was, um, you know, thousands of people showed up today and they've been practicing their pitch, hoping to get, you know, uh, get seen, you know, by a producer for Shark Tank. And while they were doing that, I was walking through the crowd, stealing their credit and debit card numbers. And I'm able to do that because millions of Americans are unprotected. My device protects you, it's easy, it doesn't use any batteries, and um, you know, I made an impact on them. I think that was what they wanted to hear, um, and it was different, it was unique, and that's what they're looking for. Ad Audition won Gilpin a spot on the season seven premiere of Shark Tank, which aired September 25th, 2015, where he ultimately made a deal with Sharks Robert and Lori. I will do $200,000 for 25%, for both of you. I'll do it. Will you? I'm in. Done. Yay! <laughs> I love it. Signal Vault retails for $14.95. When Gilpin started the company in 2013, he had $157,000 in sales in his first year. And six months leading up to the spot on Shark Tank, Sales were about $250,000 and on pace to do about $400,000, a 200% growth. Since Shark Tank aired on our website alone, and not including the 250 before, we have done $819,000 in sales in a little bit more than two months. I mean, and that's not including QVC. We were just on Zulily as well. Um, so that's just through our website, just by people seeing this episode and going to the website, um, telling their friends and family and, um, you know, the marketing that we're doing. Signal Vault is manufactured in China and fulfillment and shipping is done at the Orange City office, which has four full-time employees. The fraud protection devices will hit retail stores in the spring and Gilpin projects $3 million in sales for 2016. For The Business Beat, I'm Joanne Magley. According to the Florida Department of Health, the number of babies born HIV positive is at an all-time low. Health Department Public Information Officer Stephanie Strong takes a closer look at why this is possible in this segment of Community Health Matters. The number of babies being born with HIV has reached an all-time low, down 95% in Florida since 1993. Every baby born in Florida should have the best chance for a healthy life. Well, thankfully, uh, since 2007, there have not been any babies born HIV positive in Volusia County, and that's, that's extremely good. 
um, that's uh, it's very easy to prevent transmission from from mother to child as long as the mother knows that they're HIV positive is on medications works with their HIV doctor and their obstetrician they can reduce the percentage of transmission to about two percent the Florida Department of Health's perinatal HIV prevention program is multifaceted targeting women of childbearing age and medical providers. Medical providers are educated on Florida law, which requires that all pregnant women be tested for HIV and other sexually transmitted infections unless the woman refuses. HIV infected pregnant women are educated on the importance of proper prenatal care, adherence to medication, and alternatives to breastfeeding. Here in Volusia County, the Health Department has partnerships with our local agencies such as Healthy Start, as well as uh, other obstetricians and gynecologist offices that perform the births and see the mothers, as well as children's medical services to make sure that they are on their medications and when the baby is born, the baby is also put on medication. So it's extremely easy to prevent the transmission and our team has done an excellent job in preventing transmission over the last eight years. In addition to Florida's testing law for pregnant women and ongoing education of medical providers, the dramatic decrease in perinatal infections is attributed to decreases in HIV infection among women and designated outreach programs. Uh, again, it goes to the partnerships and also knowing where the pregnant women are that are positive. If we don't know where they are, if we can't find them or locate them, then that just increases the chance that they could become uh, or they could give birth to a positive, positive child. And that's not what we want. So the ability to track them down, provide the medication to them, get them enrolled into care so that they do get medications, then we, we have that chance to, to reduce the, the, the transmission rate. Here's a message for HIV positive mothers to be. If there is a pregnant woman out there that does not know that you're positive, you are offered uh, an HIV test twice during your pregnancy. Have that HIV test done in the first trimester and in the third trimester. Okay, make sure that you get that test and if you do put yourself at risk for some reason please make sure that you get tested because the most important part is making sure that your baby is born HIV negative. And to do that, we need your cooperation and your assistance as being the mother of that child. For more information, please visit floridaaids.org. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Stephanie Strong, Public Information Officer for the Florida Department of Health in Volusia County. And now it's time to go into the studio to join Community Information Director Dave Byron, where his guest is the Ocean Center's Director of Marketing, Angela Daniels. Thank you, Amber, and happy holidays, everyone. You know, as the books begin to close on 2015 and the page turns to a new calendar year, the county's Ocean Center is wrapping up what has been a very busy year for the county's convention center. Today, we'll get an update with our studio guest, Ocean Center Marketing Director, Angela Cameron Daniels. Angela, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Dave. Happy holidays Thank to you. Thank you. Same to you. Thanks yeah. for being with us. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to have you at the end of the year so we can see how the Ocean Center is doing as you look at 2015. Uh, what are your thoughts? How, how's uh, business been good? It has been, Dave. We ended up with the fiscal year, which ended on September 30th. Um, over last year, the last fiscal year, uh, we ended with about 113 events and had 102 last year. We're also up in rental revenue. And also, I was looking at the PACE report today, the contracts that we executed this year over last year. So if we can see this progression every year, obviously we're we're going to see an, an impact um, financially sure. and an economic impact in the area. It looks like, uh, you know, as you look at the type of events that the Ocean Center has had, you know, you've had some consumer events, you've had some conventions. Uh, it, it seems like you have a good mix of events. We do, Dave. We're very fortunate in that we have uh, that diversity in the segments. I mean, obviously, we do very strong in sports and competitive arts. 
Uh, we're doing very well in the association market right. from a state, regional, national. We do well in faith-based, social. Uh, we're doing great on the local catering side. So we're fortunate our destination, you know, is desirable for these groups and we're doing great on the retention of the business. You know, for me, I don't think I remember a time when there's been as much positive vibe in the greater Daytona Beach, Volusia County area. You know, talk of new hotels, what's going on uh, with the big renovation at the International Speedway and uh, the Tanger Outlet Mall coming in and all of the, you know, the talk about new hotels and that sort of thing. Is that buzz resonating outside the immediate area? Are people picking up on that? Well, it is, Dave. It gives us a reason, the Ocean Center staff, to a uh, conversation with planners to let them know the new projects and new developments in the area. And I think a planner, when they realize that the community is investing in themselves, right. it gives us some positive feedback. And we even, you know, put together collateral piece to send right. out to planners an email and it gives us a reason to call them, email them, and let them know what's going on in our community and it is is positive feedback we're getting. I know um, you know one of the things that you try to do is to get these planners and travel writers and others to come into the community, actually stay in the community, you showcase them around to some of the assets that we have in the Daytona Beach, Volusia County area and invariably it seems to me that they come away or they leave with uh, an opinion that was different than they had when they came in. It is really, I, I really enjoy having a planner that's never been to our area and they are pleasantly surprised because I think they have some preconceived notions right. of our destination. Love to bring those planners in and we do provide complimentary site visits for those planners that have qualifying business. We fly them in, uh, they stay in our area and we showcase not only the Ocean Center, but you know the area hotels. We'll go to the Speedway, show them the local attractions and they are, are very positive when they leave and it, it's a good feeling for us to be able to showcase not only our building right. but destination and our entire area. You know, when you when you stand stand back and look at the Ocean Center from a sales point of view, what, I mean, what, what markets uh, are the Ocean Center most uh, tailored to? Well, you know, it's, it's really hard to say. I think our destination has a lot of qualities, you know, the Ocean Center is very accessible. So I think from a drive-in meetings market, that's good because it's accessible by, you know, Interstate I-4, 95 right. for those Southeast states. Uh, the airport, our Daytona International Airport is only 10 minutes away. Right. And I think the, the destination being across the street from the one of the most beautiful beaches in the state, I think all those elements, they love to come to the Ocean Center and everything be surrounded by hotels, shopping, restaurants. I think that is, a, you know, a, attractive for, you know, the groups. But, you know, I tell you what, I've been really proud of our staff because we constantly get letters. I think our customer service is very personalized. Right. And I think that that makes a difference. They, they walk away and that repeat business that we get, we're very fortunate that we get that and it's strong. And if we can continue to do that and then add the new events, then, you know, you'll really see right. the increase in these events and our revenue. You know, one of the other things that uh, seems very positive, Angela, and that is, is uh, the relationship between the Ocean Center staff and the uh, Daytona Beach Convention and Visitors Bureau staff. It seems like now um, both organizations have clearly defined roles and the teams are working harmoniously together. What, what is the role of the CVB in terms of conventions versus the role of the Ocean Center in terms of conventions? Uh, CVB is responsible for booking that business that's in the hotel, their meeting space and their rooms. And, okay. and obviously the Ocean Center staff is responsible for booking space in the Ocean Center. So what it has done is there's no duplications of efforts. And I think that's probably another reason you have seen an increase in our room nights in our area. You know, they're working in, in their area, we're working in ours, but there are times that we pull together and go to shows together, do site visits and fams together when it, it makes sense. But I think it's really created a, a good working relationship with them where there's not a duplication of, of right. efforts. Yeah, that's and, what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when you're out there talking to convention uh, bookers, uh, meeting planners, that sort of thing, lift, uh, airlift into a community is an important aspect of being able to book a convention. And I've got to think that the JetBlue uh, flights coming in from New York uh, has got to be a, a big piece of news for the Ocean Center. 
It is, and we are constantly talking about JetBlue and that direct flight. I think where it was going to assist us with that particular market is the corporate market, those that maybe fit well with our area, but right. we've never really tackled that market in a strong way. But I think that will be more effective if we can offer those direct flights. Now, i got to ask you something that's, uh, I don't know if this is a new development, but it's certainly a growing development. The number of weddings and wedding receptions that uh, it seems like in the last six months, nine months, or whatever, maybe it's longer than that, uh, more and more interest from couples getting married and want to have their reception or even their wedding in the Ocean Center. I mean, what's going on there? Well, you know, we've never had that market, and for the last six months, you know, I think we started out with one, and now the word has gotten around what a great venue we are. In fact, I was just talking to a a bride and her parents the other day when I was in the office and they were talking about they never would have thought about a convention center as a place for a wedding and how wonderful everything went and we're very fortunate to have Spectra which was formerly Ovations and they you know their food presentation and quality of food and just their operational staff really do a great job you know in addition with our event coordinators and it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it's great to have that exposure and, and it's word of mouth and people around the community are talking about, you know, about that. And we're very fortunate to have those local catering events too. And we're very appreciative to those local agencies and companies that support us. Well, speaking of those catering events, the other thing that sort of goes along with that, and it's always surprising to me, is the number of ethnic type events that you've had in the Ocean Center is really making a name for itself, I guess, in that area. Well, I tell you, the Spectra staff, I mean, I think we have one group that's vegan without oil. I mean, the, yeah, exactly. the chef can do anything. I tell you, we, we've had a lot of diversity in the menus, and I've never really had him say, no, I can't do that. So, you know, and it's, it's great testament to, to their staff. You know, um, every time, you know, we do this little interview, we always try to talk about the fact that uh, we have a program locally where we kind of encourage companies that are in Volusia County that may go to conventions or trade shows in other parts of the country uh, to ask those folks, hey, maybe we can have our meeting or our convention at the Ocean Center. And that also seems to be uh, creating uh, some uh, business for the Ocean Center. Well, you know, Dave, it does, and I'm glad you brought that up because we've been utilizing the local community quite a lot lately. Right. We've got a couple of groups where we you know, we've called on the chamber, we've called on the school board, we've called on Volusia Manufacturing Association, and they've been right there to assist us, and it really makes a difference when you've got someone in your community backing you up, and it's been very helpful, and I think that will continue to increase, and if we get that backing, I think it can help us book some more business. And it, it's a great, Bring the Meaning Home is a great program. Well, Angela, I want to thank you for sharing the information with us. It's nice uh, to t have a conversation what's all positive, huh? Well, thank you uh, for inviting me. I lo always love to be here so we can share information about the Ocean Center. And uh, obviously a service of Volusia County government. So uh, appreciate you taking the time to be with us. All right. Thanks, Dave. Our guest today, Angela Cameron Daniels. She's the marketing director for the county's Ocean Center. And with that, Amber, we'll go back to you. And again, happy holidays, everyone. Thanks, Dave, and thank you for watching Volusia Magazine. If you have any questions about the show, you can feel free to give us a call at any of the numbers you see here, or you can log on to volusia.org and click on the News tab at the top of the screen to find us. Incidentally, you can find the County Council's meeting calendar there, too. In fact, you can use volusia.org to find out about meeting dates, workshops, topics of interest, activities, and how you can become involved. And we hope you won't forget to listen to Volusia Today. That's Volusia County Government's weekly public radio broadcast. Volusia Today airs every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Sunday mornings on the local radio stations you see on your screen. For Volusia Magazine, I'm Amber Osmond. Have a wonderful evening.